Yeah, today I will show you how you can have the simplest productivity system in the world as a busy professional because that is what matters. You cannot depend on managing tools and setting up complex systems when you're actually an expert out there and you need to focus on your own expertise. So this is why simple productivity is so important to us. After eight years of coaching professionals, helping them with their productivity systems, I can tell you it always comes down to just a few apps that you need to boost your productivity to the maximum. Because I've been in big corporate and climbing the ladder there for over eight years. I was hustling there until I eventually found out this easy principle. So without further ado, let's dive into this. So I will go from simple to complex, but you will understand why I'm adding each tool step by step. And in order to understand this, we need to understand quickly the i framework, if you haven't heard about it yet. Quick interruption here. While I was editing the video, I realized the video of me is pretty choppy. However, the audio is perfect and the screen recording is perfect. So I really wanted to get this video out to you as I think it's full of value. So I apologize for the stuttering and I thought to add this comment so you don't worry that something is wrong with your machine. It is actually the video recording itself that is so choppy. I hope that you will still be able to enjoy. So let's get back to the video. We differentiate in our ICO methodology between personal knowledge management, personal project management, business project management, and business knowledge management. Oh, that can be already complex enough. So let's just focus on the personal part, which is this personal knowledge management and personal project management. The thing is, when you go to YouTube or you go to other methodologies, they either focus on one or the other. So you have a lot about PKM, talking about obsidian, and notion and all these solutions but also you have people telling you about time management and it's always disconnected and today i will show you how these things need to be connected and how they work smoothly together where we move information to action let's start with the tool that many of the professionals are using it is apple notes okay so you're probably using apple notes and when we think about it it is your personal knowledge management system and here it starts already when you think now about on this simple map here what are you actually using Apple Notes for? Do you actually track tasks there? Do you write things down that has action? Well, then in this case, I would rather move it into the center, which indicates now that you're using Apple Notes for both. And this is where the problem has happened because Apple Notes is not a task manager. And well, it's not even a knowledge manager, a note taking app where you can take notes, you have some features like text for simple organization, but it's not a personal knowledge management tool either. And we will get there in a moment. So let's move it up here and say, we define it now as just using it for information. But what do we do with our actions now? And that's where I love to do it. And let's move this here. And now we have the actions in here. So I will take meeting notes and Apple notes. And whenever an action appears, I move it into Todoist. So now the thing is, what happens during a meeting? You have no time to open up a Todoist and take down these notes and so on. So if you really prefer to handwrite your notes into Apple Notes and write down your tasks there too, do so. But then have a routine. A routine that you have daily that just tells you simply, check your inboxes and your other apps. So you have an inbox where you keep these notes in and you might give a tag or something in there, note, because you can search your handwriting or your type text, right? That indicates that there are open tasks and then process them later on into Todoist. It's as easy as that. And the routine guarantees that you won't forget this. How do you handle routines? Well, you can set up just a simple recurring task that recurs every day, uh, depending on when you want to process these things, a morning routine, afternoon routine, and there is part of the routine that you check the Apple Notes inbox. This is already the simple system because just by using this, you have separated information from action, but you also have a single source of truth for your information and a single source of truth for your action. And that's key. You might say, this is too simple, man. I have many more things. Maybe this is the problem. If you have a lot of things in your PKM system here, that might be the problem. But don't worry, in this video, we will go deeper into this. We don't stop here. But for, I'd say, let's say 50% of the members, they already would benefit by just cutting things down, focusing on the personal part, how to get things done more efficiently, and have these two tools. 12 years ago, when I was in corporate, this was my lifesaver. I started using Todoist. Also, we had all the tools in the world in this big company. I still needed a task list that is for me personally, because I was involved in so many different projects all over the world. And I got 
actions via email, via different project managers. I needed to have a clear list of tasks that I need to do and that I can then prioritize for myself. And this is why I needed this central point for my own personal tasks. Maybe you can relate to this. That's when people actually use a piece of paper in order to write down a list of tasks they want to accomplish this week. Uh, that's what we teach in the Task Management Like a Pro course inside the iCode Journey. There we talk about how you set up routines, but also your weekly goals and your daily highlights. So you really have the pure focus on the things that matter during the week, but still compensate these unexpected events. Let's move on to something that's missing. If you're a busy professional, you probably have meetings. Let's bring in the calendar. Let's assume you're on Google or Outlook. It doesn't matter. And that's also in the PPM area because this is where action happens. This is time consuming. That's the time area. This needs time. And we also have emails. So let's bring in the email. And you see, we add the things and let's move it in here and I'll explain you in a moment. But you see already things become more complex without even you knowing. So if somebody says, I'm a professional, I'm just using Obsidian for everything. No, you're probably not. You at least have an email client and you have a calendar in order to move things forward. And maybe you hook it into Obsidian or you get your emails into Obsidian, whatever, or in Notion and all these things. In the end of the day, you have these core applications that when somebody removes the Gmail, all the emails will be gone. So you will need to rely on Gmail or on Outlook. As I said, you can also use Outlook for this. And if you have this, things become more complicated already. But we talk about this in a moment when we talk about satellite apps. This is now still a simple system. I have a calendar that shows me the meetings that I have. I have a task list to know exactly what I need to work on. I have an email, which is my team communication system, my client communication system, and I have a personal note-taking app. The key is to make these things work together. And what people then get excited about when tools like Todoist allow you now to integrate with their Google Calendar or with other calendars and show up the tasks on the calendar. That's something I don't like to do because this works if you have a low volume of tasks. Yes, then you can plan out these maybe. However, we have hundreds of tasks during the week. And again, as we have seen here, it's not as simple as it is. You probably also have a lot more tasks going on too. That's where a planner application becomes essential in order to connect these things together. And that's what we are using Sansama for, but you can also use something like Ekiflow. We personally really love Sansama. And now we come into the satellite app. So I just hover over to do is and I can connect it also with the calendar, the Sansama application, and I can connect it with my email. So now we see that this Sansama application is connected to these three apps. It is now in the satellite apps category. What does this mean? I don't have to show you the details inside the application if you don't understand the big picture. And that's why we need to look at this in this way. And now you see all the data that we get from these three applications end up in Sansama. And now I get the big picture. Now I have my calendar to see my restrictions, my time restrictions. I have the tasks that are scheduled and I think I need to plan out. So I can come inside Sansama, I can compare it with the calendar or inside Todoist when you have the calendar there. But you will see, we can now move the routines to Sansama. That makes it much easier. And the view inside Sansama gives you a different way to do it. We are not going into much detail about how this is the difference. But if you want to see a video where I compare Todoist and Sansama to really show you the difference between a task manager and a planner application, go to the comments below and let me know. I'm happy to open up my personal Todoist and Sansama and show you the details in another video. Right now, it's crystal clear to me. I get an invite to a meeting via email or a request for a meeting. You schedule the meeting in calendar, you go to the meeting and take your notes and Apple notes, and then any actions that arise out of these notes end up in Todoist. It is as easy as that. And now you see that's something you can perfectly replace with paper. So we can have a paper notebook here and we can have just you know, like a Franklin planner and therefore we can have a task list for these things too. But with the sheer volume of information and action nowadays, this is where the digital tools shine. But without understanding why you're actually using these tools and how they work together, you're lost. And after I have the tasks collected, I plan them out with my other time restrictions in my calendar. 
this is how it goes. This is all you need to, to have in order, and I guarantee this, in order to boost your productivity big time. And at the same time, have full clarity. If you become more efficient with these things, with a simple setup, you might hit a ceiling when it comes to personal knowledge management, and that's where Heptabase comes in. After testing note-taking apps for years, you know we are aware of Tana, Obsidian, Notion, all these complex systems, but Heptabase, really nails it to give you all the features, even whiteboarding and things like that, as you have seen from other videos. I have our own dedicated YouTube channel about Heptabase, but also keeping it simple. And that's not something easy to do nowadays. Many tools urge you <laughs> to take courses in order to understand it. And in the worst case, you need to download templates in order to set up the tool in a way that you can use it. But usually these templates are not customized enough for your specific use case. So that's why I'm using Heptabase in there. Apple Notes, now you have a conflict because now you have to think about where do I place these notes when I'm in a meeting? Do I do it in Heptabase? Do I do it in Apple Notes? Where do I find this later? And that's what you need to be clear the moment you add this PKM system that you start scattering information unless you perfectly define what you are using these tools for. So Apple Notes could become just a capturing device, the intermediate tool that you use for note taking during meetings because this is what you love to do handwriting and you don't want to look at the screen all the time and you just want to take notes and stay focused maybe that's you then maybe you should keep apple notes however we move it down here to the utility app section that is just indicating that this is a temporal tool it's not the single source of truth for your information in this case. So this makes Heptabase the final destination. And if you're a fast typer, then Heptabase is the go-to because I would always try to send the information in my final destination rather than to have an intermediate step that I need to process, that I need to have a set up a routine in between and so on. It goes directly into single source of truth, but we know there are many members who prefer doing this, but it's just key to have a routine where you process this information that you collect here, the actions into Todoist and the, and the information that is relevant, or maybe you want to distill it, goes into your final destination Heptabase. Maybe you like tools like Tana or Workflowy or anything like that. This is the moment, you know, where it is you. This is you now. <clears throat> maybe you prefer outliners and that's why you're using Tana. But then be aware, maybe 20% of Tana is enough for you to use or you can use Workflowy or even to make it even simpler using Evernote, right? This is also an option that you can have. We can place it perfectly this way too. But now you see the definition stays clear and these are core applications. So now you're aware whenever you replace this or you find a shiny object and you start adding all these things after watching a YouTube video, you get confused. Where should I place now my information? And this is the key outcome of seeing it this way. And in the next video, I will show you what happens when we add the business part where we have project management, where we have business knowledge management, you see complexity increases. Therefore, we also need to increase the complexity of our productivity system but with informed decisions. So if you want to see the next video, make sure to like and subscribe the video. Share with your other colleagues if they are not aware of the system and struggling too. And let me know in the comments below. I catch you up in the next video then. Okay, I'm just testing if this is working. It's actually recording the wrong screen, which is this one.